Could you imagine your fiance flirting with another beautiful woman right in front of your face? Hmm. On today's case, Miss Umara says that while she loves her beau, Mr. Joseph, she says the sheer amount of casual disrespect he shows her borders on the ridiculous. And she says she won't be putting up with it much longer. Ms. Amara says that she finds it curious that Mr. Joseph is jealous of her speaking to other men, even though he's the one who is blatantly refusing to give her what she really wants, a child. Will this couple make it down the aisle? Or has Mr. Joseph been flirting with disaster? Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Amaro versus Joseph. Thank you very much. Ms. Amaro, Mr. Joseph. Ms. Amaro, you are here in court today because you say you are at the end of your rope. You say Mr. Joseph is a player and a control freak who lied to you about his desire to have children. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Joseph, you say you are completely fed up with Ms. Amaro. You claim that she is an angry alcoholic who is constantly putting you in dangerous situations. You say you are done with the disrespect, the angry outbursts, and the wild mood swings. Yes, Your Honor. So you all have been together for seven years now, living together for the last three years, and actually engaged for six months. Yes. So yes, this is supposed to be a relationship that's moving to permanence, but you say he's a little too flirty for your uses right now. There's just some things, Your Honor, that just need to be resolved before we can take that big step down the aisle, and I feel like being here today, I'm hoping that we can resolve them. Tell me what the problem is. Your Honor, he tends to flirt with every girl that comes his way, and it's in front of me, so I feel the disrespect, and it causes me to feel a little insecure. I feel like he knows these things, and I think he does it deliberately, at least sometimes, and I feel like, you know, I feel like we've been together far too long for this to be happening, and if you're, you know, wanting to take the next step with me, why keep doing, you know, disrespectful things? And you have had this conversation with Mr. Joseph? Multiple times, Your Honor. So, Mr. Joseph, Ms. Amaro says you know that this is irritating to her. Do you even see yourself flirting, sir? I do not. I don't... I wouldn't consider what I do flirting. I believe that when I got with her, when we became, you know, a couple, she was okay with who I was as a, as a person. Mm -hmm. and, and I... Your Honor, one time at a restaurant, this man flirted <laughs> with our waitress right in front of me, and it almost took a point to being, like, a sexual flirtation. It wasn't just, you know, coy, cute. It was, like, very... Can very... you give me an actual example? What do Absolutely, you mean? Your Honor. So we went to this restaurant that we go to all the time, and it was a new waitress we've never seen before. And when she came to the table to take our order, it became, like, a sitcom. This man was telling jokes I've never heard before. It was like he was turned on, almost. He was saying things like she was cute, her laugh was cute, he likes when she laughs. And so, to give myself a break, I went to the restroom, and when I came back, she was sitting almost... Like, she was sitting there. She seemed startled that I came back so quickly. Okay, so, Mr. Joseph, was that accurate that when she returned from the restroom, the waitress was sitting down at the table? She failed to tell you that we knew this waitress as well. No, it was more like we knew of her, Your Honor. Mr. Joseph? Sure. Uh, I would say we, we're, we're regulars um, at this particular place. And so, when we come in, you know, we know these people. And everybody knows y'all, is what you're saying. Everybody knows who we are, yes. It's not cheers, yes, Your sure. Honor. Okay. No, it's not like but, that. We but I'm still up. trying to figure out why a waitress uh, who's on duty would sit at your chair, sit at your table. Because she felt the flirty rapport that, was, that was, he was giving off. No, she didn't sit with me. She said... Tatiana said she was practically sitting with me. So, she was leaning on the booth. She wasn't necessarily next to me within my bubble. Okay. So, at least Miss Amaro, her perception... Yes. ...was that it was an inappropriate closeness. Would you give her that? No. This seems like you all are having a complete breakdown of your communication, that you're interpreting something one way, you're interpreting something another way, and that usually means that there's something at the foundation of that. There's something else. And so, you brought the case. So, you know, I want to find out how you make your case. So, you, you, you're you saying to me that he's been too flirty. You also said initially that he was controlling. Very. 
Um, I'm trying to put this, the, the foundation together. What do you mean by that, Ms. Amara? It's, it's almost a double standard, Your Honor. Um, he tends to tell me things that I can and can't do, which he does all the time, which was why I started with the flirting. He's always flirting with girls in front of me, but let me even speak to someone. Uh, let me even have a relationship with someone in my past that's a male, and then that becomes a huge problem. I get berated like I'm a child. Um, and I just feel like if, if he wants to take the next step, we will have to like you said, fix our communication problems because there's a, a serious problem here. Your Honor, mm. when... I'd just like to interject a little bit. Of course, bit. this is um, your time. If you're drinking constantly, you're drinking constantly every day, you're taking eight to ten shots a day. Whoa! You're, you're, and I mean, you know, shots, mixed drinks, it's, it's... I'm not counting all the time, but when I do count, it, it gets up there. And when... Your Honor, this is lie. When That's I express a lie. Myself, when, when I express myself... And I'm telling her that this is wrong, and you know you need to do a little, you need to move differently about it. Then it becomes, you know, we're we're gaslighting on things that didn't, that weren't even problems to begin with. And you know we we're here now, and I'm not even really sure why I got dragged here in that regard. So, Miss Amaro, the underlying issue happens to be excessive drinking. So only you know how that has become the perception. I'll ask you straight out. Do you think you drink to excess? No, I do not think I drink to excess, Your Honor. I think I drink often enough, but I don't think I drink enough that I don't remember things. I don't think I... I believe that he's offended uh, about my accusations, and that's why he's harping on the drinking. So you think he is actually projecting right now? Absolutely, Your Honor. That's perfect. Your Honor, so, I... But, but I'm, I'm coming back okay, to you, Mr. Great. Joseph, because... Um, I asked Ms. Amara to make her case about flirting. I want you to make your case about drinking to excess. Uh. Do you have instances which make you think that the drinking is not just social, that it has become an issue that you all need to address? We're coming home from one of our favorite restaurants and we were both drinking together. We're crossing a street. A driver, he pulls up um, on the crosswalk section of where we are a little too far. She just goes and starts going off, cursing him out. And then the guy gets out and lo and behold, he draws a gun on me. What? He draws a gun on me. He doesn't do anything to her because that's how it goes. Um, we we're coming home from one of our favorite restaurants and we were both drinking together, um, I'll add that, on this particular day. And as we're heading home, we're crossing a street. A driver, he pulls up um, on the crosswalk section of where we are a little too far. Tatiana being as belligerent as she is... Meaning or, you all were walking and a driver came up a little too close to you? A little too close. Okay. Right? The driver pulls up, she just goes and starts talking crazy to the driver, just going off, cursing him out and threatening him. And it's causing a scene. And then the guy gets out and lo and behold, he draws a gun on me. What? He draws a gun on me. He doesn't do anything to her because that's how it goes. He puts the gun to me and I'm sitting there and I'm like, hey, look, like I'm trying to defuse the situation to the best of my ability. I do end up doing that, thankfully. And once that, after that happens, I confront her about it. And she being as drunk as she is, she wants to, oh, you didn't die, though. You didn't get hurt. Oh, this and that didn't happen. Oh, you good, you know. You okay, right? You're breathing, right? This is pretty serious. You know, I find it very funny, Your Honor, that he would even bring this up right now in, in the public like this, because that night we Your ended Honor, up... Your Honor, dragged me here. Your, gonna... Your Honor, that night we ended up having <laughs> you <dragged me> passionate <laughs> sex, which he was saying to me how he's so imp imp uh, proud of me for standing up for myself. So for him to bring this up right now, he's just trying to get back at me, Your Honor. That's a pretty dangerous situation. Do you... It's also a private one, too. I can't believe that I'm answering to that right now. Here's the deal. Um, I'm only going to be faced with what I, I hear, and... Now, I'm not going to try to embarrass you, but I am just going to say that's the scariest thing that I've heard in a long time, and I'll tell you why. Things can escalate to really bad situations, and I'm going to make you feel really guilty for a reason, because his job is to be the protector, but your job is to be the hedge of protection so that you never put your man, your family in the situation that you have geeked them up 
to cross that line. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely, Your Honor. We, we've, we've resolved this particular situation in, in the privacy of our own home. The issue that we haven't resolved is his flirtiness, his, his lies, his, his um, disrespect. He, he turns around, he says he wants one thing and turns around and says a completely different thing. That's what we're dealing with. That issue that we're speaking about has definitely been resolved. I, I, just to, to name a few things, I've, when we talked, when we first got together, we both said we wanted children, and now he doesn't want them all of a sudden. So I, there's issues that we have not resolved, like this, like the flirting, like the disrespect, that should be talked about more than something that we've resolved privately. Um, something tells me you haven't resolved it because it probably wouldn't have been brought up. Yes. That, I mean, that's just me. Nobody, you know, because here's the thing. You know people say they forgive, but they never forget. And even if they say they forget, they never forget how you made them feel. Mm. That's just the truth. When we first got together, we both said we wanted children. Mr. Joseph, we, we're doing truth-telling right now. I lied to her. Um, I never wanted kids. I thought it helped. It's wrong. I, I'll, I'll apologize for that, Your Honor. Like, you know, um, even if I could do it here, I, I, I am sorry. I apologize. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. You know, having a family is absolutely important. Yes. Runner. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there because Miss Amara brought this up and I want to make sure... She knows that she's being completely heard. I imagine when y'all got together, y'all had conversations about where the relationship was going, and as the relationship grew, you're saying to me, you all discussed children? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Joseph said that he, too, wanted children. Yes, for And a you're long saying time. that now he has changed his mind? Recently, he's... About the time of the pandemic, he's recently changed his mind that he no longer wants kids. And uh, that's five years in, Your Honor. That's a little bit of time that we've wasted in thinking that he did want kids. Mr. Joseph, we, we're doing truth-telling right now. Um, What's that about? I lied to her. Um, I never wanted kids. I thought it helped. It's wrong. I, I'll, I'll apologize for that, Your Honor. Like, you know, um, even if I could do it here, I, I, I am sorry. I apologize. You don't want children? I do not want children, and I... I more so don't want children now because she does have a drinking issue. And I've been talking to her about her drinking issues for about a good four years now, like, where, where the, the, the conversation's been argumentative. Your Honor, he's contradicting himself. My complaint was that he's overbearing, overprotective, and, and his relationship with females is disrespectful. And he's coming up here talking about my drinking. I feel like this is a way... He's trying to gaslight me, Your Honor. I'm just curious, and, and you have a right, both of you have a right to say that's too personal and you don't want to go there. Do you think maybe you said you wanted children until... Uh, over the course of the last few years, the relationship has not panned out the way you wanted it to pan out? That's an excellent assessment. I think that um, if we did communicate better if, or the communication was a lot stronger than it has been, then I, w I wouldn't... No, I wouldn't doubt myself of, you know, wanting, wanting to have children with her or creating a family or doing anything that requires, you know, deeper, uh, deeper thought. Mm -hmm. And so... I think that if we could communicate better, things could get better, but I don't see it happening that way. And children are not in your future in your mind? Whew, um, no, Your Honor. Not at the moment, no. So, Ms. Amara, you feel like you wasted some time? Yes, Your Honor, yeah. Um, you know, COVID was very difficult for everybody. Yes. And something tells me that it was exacerbated whatever conflicts you all were having, because we were all thrown together and, you know, whoever you were nesting with is who you nested with. Exactly. Um, uh, some out of the desire and some out of necessity. I, I actually say the best thing that happened during COVID is I got to fall more in love with my husband and we realized we really do have things in common that we love, okay? Like Forensic Files. We watched every darn episode of all, like, 26 seasons. Um, those are things that you know, we found that we really enjoyed. Well, did y'all spend that, that kind of time together? Drinking, Your Honor. Yes, we did. We spent and, that time drinking together. And you know, a lot of people did that. 
lot of yes. people ate, binge ate, and Same. they say they call it the COVID-15 because everybody <laughs> gained 15 pounds, and um, a lot of people drank, some people took up drugs. So here's, here's my point. There are some serious um, foundational problems that are going on. You don't like the way Mr. Joseph interacts with other women, and it's caused you not to trust. Absolutely. And to feel insecure. You see it as disrespect. Yes. Mr. Joseph says that he is who he is, and he's been this person, and you've known that from the beginning. It's sort of what made you like him from the beginning was his flirtatious nature, but that he is not being unfaithful to you. You all don't communicate with each other about your level of expectations. At the foundation is a very serious lie that you wanted to have children. That's pretty serious because for someone who is of, as they say, childbearing age, and if that's important to Miss Amaro, um, she don't want to waste her time. Your Honor, would you want to have children with someone who drank all the time and didn't take any warnings? I would never want to bring a family together as a family until I had resolved all my issues. And if there's an addiction issue or I'm concerned about um, excess in any way, I'm going to address that. But if I also have controlling issues as a part of it or if there are insecurity issues, um, I want to resolve that also because my whole goal would be, if I'm going to start a family, that I want my foundation to be strong. So you all are supposed to be building something for the long term, um, and I see a very shaky foundation. I don't hear trust. I don't hear security. He's worried about your excessive drinking. I hear that. And if somebody loves you and they say, I'm concerned about this, at some point, you have to say, well, could they be right? And it, you all might actually benefit from having a third party sit down and listen to both of you, if this relationship is important to you. I don't know if you're going to get over um, not being able to have children with him, because that's a pretty serious issue. Mr. Joseph, you weren't honest about something that's foundational. If a family was what Ms. Amara wanted, then she had every right to sort of know where you felt about that. That's fair. But if you've made these kinds of decisions based on what has happened over the last seven years, then that's something that you all need to be able to discuss. Um, if you can pull this out, the only way you will is if you start building that foundation from the beginning. Um, Y'all don't have that yet. And you're, you're at this, this stage where you're either gonna go left or you're gonna go right. Mm -hmm. And if this relationship is really important to you, you have to build this foundation, which is based in trust, communication, and then love grows. You can't just say you love somebody. I haven't heard anything today that says that you can't get over it, but it starts with a real conversation, not over alcohol. Uh, I cannot believe you would say that when you know that we drink together. We do drink together, but that's every now and then. You, to, most to of the time, that, you drink all the time. To make that seem like the reason why you don't want to have kids is ridiculous. There are so many underlying issues that these young people um, have not dealt with. I don't know if they can build it. What do you think, Robert? That's a tough one mm -hmm. because, I mean, from day one, he didn't even... He wasn't even truthful about the whole kid situation. I know. That's, that's, that's tough. That's hard to get over. Yeah. I don't think he wanted to tell the full truth. I think this drinking has soured him on her. Mm -hmm. Whether or not uh, they can make it, I'm not really sure. Yeah, me either. Um, I'll be curious. Mm -hmm. We should follow up to find out what really happened between them. I'd like to know.